confidence and adaptability. If you want to impress people and be likable, then you need to develop your confidence and your adaptability. In other words, you need to become the kind of person who can be dropped into any situation and who can then simply adapt to the new surroundings. Imagine that someone has seen your LinkedIn profile and they want to see if you have what it takes to work for their exciting new startup. So, they invite you to another country to visit their office and to head over drinks and hang out. Sound ridiculous? It has happened to me. And in this day and age, it's increasingly likely to happen to you. You're now meeting a group of people having to talk business and fun, dealing with another country and another culture, and actually spending a whole night and into the next day with them. If you are shy, if you are awkward, then this is not going to go well. If you want to leave a positive impression, then you need to be easygoing, confident, and friendly. You need to be outgoing, and you need to do all the things we've already discussed in the last video. These sorts of experiences are what give us the networking opportunities we need to fulfill our goals. So what does that mean? Does it mean that a natural introvert doesn't stand a chance of being truly successful? No. It just means they need to learn how to not act like an introvert. On becoming socially bulletproof. When I was a kid in high school, I was not always highly confident in social settings. I was a natural introvert, and I would often worry too much about what other people thought. With training and self-discipline, I managed to train myself out of this. Just as you mustn't try to actively impress other people, it's also important not to worry about what they think of you in any broader sense. As soon as you start to have this worry, you lose the ability to be authentic, relaxed, and easygoing. You will now begin to second-guess your own actions, second-guess what you're saying to people, and you'll become in your own head. You need to turn off your inner Woody Allen, and that means you need to genuinely be fine with people not liking you or being offended by you. Know that you aren't going to be liked by everyone. That's simply not possible. And know that there's nothing wrong with that fact either. At the same time, remember that in most cases you aren't going to need to interact with these people again. And so it really doesn't matter if you get along or not. But knowing this and actually feeling that way when you're talking are two very different things. And this is where practice and exposure come in. To get over my own slight inhibitions when I was younger, what I would do is to go to parties where I knew barely anyone and then just practice talking to more people. I had a friend from my first school, and I would go to parties with him that had nothing to do with my school then. Often, we'd stay late, we'd talk to people, and we'd even get invited to other parties where neither of us knew any people. Not only was this experience a lot of fun, but it also enabled me to literally practice speaking to new people, to overcome nerves that I might have had in those kinds of situations, and to practice caring less what people thought of me. And this confidence and this ease would go on to be critical in both my career and in meeting women as I grew up. You can take this one step further by using concepts from CBT. CBT is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and this is a form of psychotherapeutic intervention that is focused on changing the way you think. The objective is to look at the unuseful thoughts and beliefs. Things like, people will laugh at me if I say something stupid, and then they break them down. You can do this simply by testing them. For instance, you can remind yourself that most people are polite and ask yourself why it would matter if you were laughed at anyway. You might remind yourself that the people you were speaking to are probably just as nervous as you are. This is called thought challenging. But better yet is to go one step further and try hypothesis testing. As the name suggests, this literally means that you are going to be testing your own belief by purposely saying something stupid or by purposefully stuttering whatever it is you're afraid of. You can do this in a harmless setting, such as in a shop that you don't visit frequently. Try putting on a funny voice as you order food, or be purposefully awkward. What you'll learn is that no one says anything, and that you have nothing to be afraid of. Simply putting yourself out there more and exposing yourself to more situations will also help you to do this, and you will naturally encounter situations where things don't go to plan. You'll learn that it's fine to say something awkward once in a while, or to stutter a little. And moreover, you will become accustomed over time to these situations, such that you'll become desensitized, go to enough parties, and eventually you stop being afraid of situations like that. It becomes normal. 
And that's when you start to talk confidently with attractive members of the opposite sex or potential future employees. It's also when you learn to stand up for yourself when you have been wronged, and it's how you lose fear of confrontation. Forget nerves. Forget anxiety. Welcome to Calm Confidence. This is what it is to be socially bulletproof. Tip. Want to go further with this? Want to develop your confidence and charisma quicker? Certain classes are all about breaking down your inhibitions. Try stand-up comedy, for instance, and you'll quickly learn how to interact with anyone. Likewise, taking up acting is another good way to quickly lose your inhibitions. Martial arts can be a great way to become less afraid of confrontation. Social Chameleon One of the things that helped me in this example was having a friend from outside my school. Growing up, this gave me a more diverse roster of friends, which meant I never had to try so hard to impress one group of people. I actually had several groups of friends, and the other benefit to this was that it enabled me to spend time with people who were quite different from each other and to be exposed to people who were even more different. I then went to university where I met people from all around the world before moving up north for a year. This is important. We've already learned how to be socially bulletproof, but this adaptability will allow you to become a social chameleon too so that you can impress everyone from your partner's parents to a group of football hooligans. The key is to remain yourself while still adapting your language and which side of yourself to embrace. Don't do anything out of character. Or again, it seems weak and eager to please. But simply hold back certain parts of yourself so that you aren't swearing wildly in front of your girlfriend or boyfriend's parents. Still, show your real sense of humor and they'll likely feel respected as a result. Perhaps most important of all is not to judge anyone for being different. If people feel judged by you, then their response will be to judge back, and that's when things don't always end well. You can develop all this in theory, but really nothing will match the experience you get from simply meeting lots of different people and spending time with a wide range of characters and personalities. Take up opportunities and invitations, and get out of your comfort zone a lot. You might eventually get to the point where you've dealt with such a wide range of people that you end up with a kind of template for many of the characters you'll continue to meet going forward. Keeping calm. Whether it's when meeting a new group of people or it's when something goes unexpectedly wrong, being able to stay calm and in command of your response to a situation is also a skill worth cultivating. This will come a lot from some of the CBT we've already discussed, and you can apply this to broader situations. Asking yourself, for instance, whether panicking and getting into a flap really helps, or just how bad the worst outcome can be. At the same time, though, it's also useful to be more aware of your own body and biology and the role this plays in our fight or flight response. When in a high pressure situation, your body responds by releasing neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, and cortisol. These increase the heart rate, contract muscles, speed of breathing, and more. This helps us in case of physical confrontation, but in all other situations, it is a hindrance. When it comes to being witty and charming, Having a mind that is racing doesn't help. Again, desensitization through practice will help this. But also useful is to simply breathe gently and steadily while being sure to completely inflate and deflate the lungs each time as you do. This actually activates the rest and digest state, which is the opposite of fight or flight, and which will suppress many of those symptoms. You'll be calmer, more relaxed, and more at ease. Try to focus on body language too. Not only does body language communicate a lot about you, but it can also actually end up steering your state of mind. Adopt a more relaxed posture, and your mind will follow. There are supplements you can use to help keep yourself calm too, and these might be useful when going into a potentially high-pressure situation. For example, L-theanine can be useful for reducing your stress response and helping you to stay relaxed, as can a range of apoptogenic herbs. And looking after your body generally will also help. When we're low on sleep or feeling unhealthy, our bodies are much faster to jump into panic mode. When you have a healthy and well foundation, you can stay calm and focused much more easily. All this will help you to act completely at ease even when in high-pressure situations. Being in good physical shape can also help greatly, as it means you'll be able to deal physically with a bad situation more effectively. You become much less concerned what someone thinks of you or getting into confrontations when you know you'd ultimately win if it ever came down to a fight. When things go wrong suddenly, 
Being able to act calmly is also a very powerful capability. To be able to do this, you need to be able to remove yourself emotionally, which is what will otherwise lead to rash behavior and mistakes. First, take a step back and don't rush into action. Next, imagine yourself as an impartial observer. What would you recommend someone else to do in this situation? Use some CBT to remind yourself that panicking won't help, and then lay out the steps you need to take to get the best outcome and take them. Action points. This time, our takeaway points are practice putting yourself in stressful situations. Consider trying stand up comedy or drama classes. Use CBT to remind yourself that it doesn't matter if you aren't always perfectly charming. Be yourself and don't worry whether others like you. Take as many opportunities as possible and develop as diverse a range of friends and colleagues as possible. Detach yourself from truly stressful situations by removing yourself emotionally. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.